This is Keepsakes, the podcast. I'm Jay Agonoy. Hey guys, it's the 32nd episode of the podcast and luckily I was able to invite here one of the guys behind Project Materia. You've, if you've seen them as they perform on stage in multiple, multiple anime events, cosplay events, then you should, you, you, you probably, you probably have seen or heard their performances. So with that, I have with me, JM, um, you, you've been doing a lot, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, on top of Shantri, um, then it's more work-wise. And um, yeah, thankfully, I had this band for quite a time there, and, and um, it's evolved from a simple J-Rock cover group into something else entirely. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, you know, parang dami, dami mo yatang uh, kinakalimbang dyan. <laughs> well, sorry about that because, uh, yeah, medyo may nagdidi na. And that, that's why I'm trying to look for a place uh, and yeah. uh, measure other. Just give me just one second. Okay, I'm doing that. Yeah, I'm doing that. All right, no worries. Uh, you know, uh, so while he's doing his thing, and before we begin with our interview, with our conversation, I'll slide in what I'm going to do this coming weekend at Otaku Fest 2019. Otaku Fest 2019. Is it this weekend now? Uh, the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, time. Plus, so plus. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Oh, so you're going. Yeah. Congrats. Keepsakes, the podcast. I will be visiting one of the biggest pop culture events in Cebu. It's Otaku Fest 2019 and it will be happening on February 23 to 24, Saturday, Sunday at SM Seaside City Cebu's Maze Garden. It's an outdoor event, just like any other Otaku Fest events that they held. And for the first time, they will be holding this event for two days. So a lot of activities are in store, three of which are the World Cosplay Summit Philippines Cebu Qualifiers, the Pop Culture Hiroshima Philippines Cebu Qualifiers and National Finals, and the One Piece Day, which is a gathering of all the One Piece fans, those who are cosplaying characters from One Piece, will be gathering in one venue on the second day of Otaku Fest. It will be a major part of the event as well. And aside from these activities, we also have the Asian Pop Dance Competition, the Japanese Singing Competition, the Artist Alley, the Cosplay Parade, and there will be exhibits as well as a Saber Storm Tournament and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Card Fight Vanguard Tournaments. The guests for this year's event are Team Sekai, that's Sergio Santa Ana and Kai Raito, our WCS Philippines 2018 Team Philippines, and also the advisor to the World Cosplay Summit and very popular, Reka. Tickets are available at TicketToMe.net and you can check out the Otaku Fest Facebook page for more information. Keepsakes is a media partner for Otaku Fest 2019. Keepsakes, the podcast. We all do. I mean, um, not to hijack this um, call of yours. I know you're the host, but uh, I'd like to speak something good about Jay Shemper. So Jay, matagal na nandito sa community. Na. And he's done a lot of covers and works. Um, I do hope the guys uh, hearing this podcast or following this, please support him. And also the other guys in, who do media and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, JM. Thank you, JM. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. All right. So, you good? Yeah. Yeah, go. Let's go. All right, All right JM. Uh, how's uh, Project Material nowadays? Project Material nowadays? Uh, it's really tiresome. Maybe, I mean, um, the band's already been in the community for about four years. Um, the selection of songs are not getting easier. And uh, we're still sticking to the usual routine that we have for Materia has been in day two, not in day one, but day two it's uh, more Final Fantasy and also video game music. 
but we still uh, you know, to place a bit more anime songs as much as we could, but we're sticking to what we really enjoy doing. And also, um, upcoming single, probably before the end of the third month, or sorry, third quarter. So yeah, more stuff to come. Hmm, so you're planning something on the third quarter? Yeah, mm. most probably you're going to release a single by the third quarter. Okay, so now that you've evolved from this, uh, you, you started from the bottom, now you're now producing a single. Um, how's, the, how's the journey so far? It's hard. Um, I'm not sure if we've already talked to any other bands, uh, particularly. You could ask Asterisk. Um, those guys are great, and they may probably say, they'll tell you the same thing, that in this community or even any community in music or even in arts, it's really hard because you have to build your name, you have to build the brand, you have to um, go out there and sell your music as um, a person or at least keep, uh, gather a lot of contacts. That's the outside stuff. The inside stuff, it's a bit more easier for me because um, I've been blessed to have great band members with me and um, they follow the routine that we have, which is working. We never had any you know, I'm really proud of uh, because everyone is in the same page. And uh, recently we also have a new vocalist where at least right now she's still um, in the face of, of just being a guest, but we're targeting getting more vocalists at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if you, you've watched the 2016 Battle of the Bands, Jay, on um, BOA. Not sure if you were there. Uh, that was the most uh, in... 2016. Yeah. 2016. I think I was there, but I didn't go. Uh, that, that is also blurry to me. Mm, that, that was the, probably the most highlight because we went one-on-one -on -one with the defending champions uh, in Asterisk. It was... Uh, it's the Battle of the Titans, kind of, but we don't consider ourselves a Titans. Um, we're, we are just people that we want to do play. Uh, ang hirap nun kasi expectations nun, pero namin matatalo kami. Uh, defending champs are doing well as a band. And at that point, 2016, medyo shaky pa kami as a group, pero we did our best and we won. And uh, we still continue on the tradition that if we're going to join Battle of the Bands, at least win it. Um, but we also try to help out other people as well, other people in the community which, which, which um, needs gigs or if they need contacts in order to uh, spread their music, yeah, we're open help, help, helping them out because we know how hard it is to be a musician because I, I, I'm also involved before. But you're saying that uh, aside from playing as a band, you're also helping others to connect to uh, other bands as well, am I correct? Yeah, and not just in other bands, but also with other people um, outside of the community. Like, if you guys need, need gigs, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's try to win music out there, or at least um, advertise your, your band with other people. It's like, tulungan na lang, kasi maliit na yung community. Kapag may lead ako, oy, pwede kayo tumuntog dito, pasa kayo ng ganda. I'm refer to you, or I'm going to advise. Na yeah, ako ng uh, ako ng refer to you. Yeah, tulungan na lang talaga sa community dun malit na lang. Mm. All right. Uh, for the uninitiated, uh, can you tell us how old Project Materia is? How old Project Materia is? It's around four years na. Um, roughly, yeah, four years na. Kasi nagsimula siya general sa lagang 2014. It's not even Project Materia back then. Wala pang pangalan pa. But if you're going to count long in time that we have fallen ourselves proud of Materia, it's around three years or three and a half years. Mm. All right, so around three and a half years. And uh, nasabi ko nga kanina, no, you've been in, you've been invited to a lot of events. Siguro lahat na ng mga uh, most most events uh, na kapa, uh, na invite na kayo as a band mm -mm. and uh, for time and time uh, time from time to time siguro you've had a change set and uh, I just like to ask how do you make 
this project a constant thing. More like, um, tagal na kayo dito, no? Four years. Eh, we've, I've, I've seen bands go from here to there. Setting aside Asterisk, ano? Kasi, matibay din yung mga yan. How do you maintain mm. project mm. material so well it stayed for three and a half years? It's simple, man. It's like working in a team. I, I know you could relate. Um, once you work, even professionally, you have to look out for each other, number one. Uh, number two is people within the group. I'm not just talking about the band, I'm talking in general. They should have um, one goal in mind. Because if, okay, um, most of the bands or even individual musicians, um, they have this face that they call, uh, call this creative differences. Uh, it's an exception with that. That's the reason why people leave bands. Um, that's why people decide to go their own way. The good thing about what I have right now is that we are open to suggestions within the group. Sometimes, though, I do almost 90% of the, the song lists because most of them are working and also don't have the time to do this and do that. They give suggestions to try to play it. But if we see something that's working for us, like this whole Final Fantasy thing, um, it's working great. So we're sticking to it. I'm not sure how for how long, but at least we're working for it. Uh, we're working with it, sorry. And um, there's no infighting. Um, there's no ego in the group. There's no problems like personal issues. We try to avoid from everything. We just go into the studio, play some music, good music, uh, try to render it the best that we can, and then criticize each other just in case we need um, you know, all this feedback. Not, no one takes it personal when some something says bad about your playing within the group. We take it as a challenge. That's why we've been here for about four years. <laughs> And it's great to know na na to kasi of course um there there's lots of bands eh. and uh, these they of course they go to creative differences uh siguro yun yung maiisip ko when it comes to uh in fighting ano and I'm glad also that you answered it as well um for you uh, f- uh on the other hand can you give uh, kasi hindi naman ako masyadong uh, I do admit hindi ako masyadong active when it comes to the band scene. Um my colleagues, my former colleagues will much prefer hear this. But I'd like to ask ano uh, g- can you uh, an example of your gigs outside the cons? Outside cons. Uh well, I tell you, this is no longer J community stuff. So yeah, um, when are we talking about? Sorry about this. Let me expound the question. Are we talking about how we how we uh, get gigs outside, or what is the experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how do we get gigs outside? It's uh, it's what they call this. It's a combination of me being a photographer um, because I also shot stuff for gigs before concerts i use that to my advantage most of the time so i i know people within the scene the music scene and i use that just in case they need something new in the lineup or the the biggest thing that or the biggest um, gig that we have is we played in sagiho in makati and people in the lineup are mary zart Mayonnaise and Neuda. During that time, syempre, when you hear mayonnaise, ano naisip mo? Malaking banda. <laughs> so, nakasabay na namin yung mga yun before. And it's a different experience talaga. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it's a big transition once you play outside of the community from conventions lang. I'm not saying conventions are bad, pero you'll be stagnant there sometimes. Parang hindi mo alam yung hindi mo alam din pakiramdam na tumugtog na ibang genre ang kasama. We, we've been submerged, submerged to that so many times na. Though, 
Uh, if the level of enjoyment naman ang titignan, mas enjoy pag namin ito mong sa body. Why? Because people appreciate it more out there sa conventions. Unless we're, we're going to play on something like a technical music night where people would understand what we're playing. 99% of the time, people don't understand what we're playing um, in bars because we're playing mostly instrumentals. But yeah, we, we had the the opportunity to play on big stages, you know, so small gigs. Um, all of them, you'd be able to learn something out. It's like transition phase in dito. Parang pumunta ka sa isang opisina and then ipopromote ka. Tapos ayaw mo na dito, babalik ka ulit sa ano. Sa maba, usually baka. So, it's really enjoying naman. You learn a lot of things about people. You, get, you gain friends, you gain contacts. Pero in the end, it's really just a matter of um, your goals where you really want to play. Alright, so, uh, alright. So, mentioning everything about uh, being into cons, going into gigs... Is there anything that you would like to disclose about Project Materia as a whole na hindi pa namin alam? Well, um, right now, except nung yung pinaformulate namin um, new single na kanta, there's nothing secret in Materia. Uh, the only secret that you'll get is we don't post too much. Uh, that's the only secret. But you hear about you hear a lot on um, the individual band members' pages and themselves. Next gig nga is in Ateneo, on March 29. I'm not sure if you're going there. I hope you go there, Jay. It's going to be a good event. That, that, yeah, I think that's it's right. not so much race. It's it's the same it's the same event where I launched my second episode and on the field ako nun, and I was really happy with the outcome. When was this? Noon last year oh we were there last year then actually uh, material has been there for two years now so swear to kami because uh, let me just share this uh, ito hindi ko na share sa ibang tao pero in ADMU before dun sa Hinomoto I've been following their page and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure uh, pero 90% per, 90% siguro mababalidate ko na bago nakapasok ang materia there were no other outside bands playing for Hinomoto so um, not so much okay. So this is the one of the what they call this uh, things that I do as I look over the band. So we can't um, we can place ourselves in a position that we just have to play in cons. So we need this. We need to explain schools or academies and universities. And it's a good avenue because um, those venues tend to have more people appreciating what you're doing. So I pitched um, because, uh, something in Hinemoto three years ago. I think it's around or three or two years ago. I can't remember. <laughs> 2016. Um, they replied back and asking us um, what we, we could play for them. And I told them that we play this kind of music. Sometimes they also play a bit of anime OST. So yeah, just went in. And then we've been invited there last year 2017 and then yeah 2018 and right now it's the fourth year or the third year i can't remember <laughs> but uh, yeah we, we will be there in 29 and we have some surprises for people mm, all right all right so we'll leave that surprise to for others to guess na lang ano um okay so going back to discussions about bands uh recap tayo no we've talked about being a band in events, in gigs, and now uh, the future plans. And of course, since you're going to release an album, will it be first played on Spotify or will you be releasing it as a digital album? Or will you, do you plan on a physical release? Actually, we're not aiming for an album yet, Sarge. Um, it's just a single song. Yeah, right now, sorry. Sorry to correct you there, man. Um, What's going to happen, what I have on my timeline is the single will go out and then most probably it will be out um, either on Spotify. Uh, I'm not sure how it works. I'm still looking into it because I do have some friends um, using Spotify um, as a medium to have their music out. 
but what my target is, the single will go out, and then we will be shooting a video for that, and everything will go out like that. We're not really aiming for an album because if, I'm not sure if you're seeing the trend right now, but actually, albums don't actually, work. yes, time at time. Albums don't, yeah, albums never work nowadays. Uh, only here in the Philippines. In the U.S., um, it still works. In Japan, it still works. But what's happening here in the Philippines is that it's so hard to get a life, or at least to produce the music. Uh, it's not a vi- viable option financially. So we just have to create one good song, or at least something na maganda na magusta na tao, and then send it out. And the video will come soon about the song, and then let's see how it goes. Uh, Siguro, that's all the time that uh, I can ask about project material as a whole. Maybe in the next few parts, uh, I'll be talking to you in person during uh, uh, Natsumatsuri if the environment allows. Pero uh, until then, thank you very much, JM, for sharing the story of project material to us. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks so much for the opportunity for letting me uh, talk about the band and also our friends in the community. Um, yeah, you do, we're just um, a Facebook message away. Uh, you can visit our page in um, facebook.com slash project material 1515-2015. And um, yeah, uh, anyone could just approach us in Konsen, even in Natsumasuri. Uh, we're open to talk mm. to anyone. All right, actually. so that's Project Pateria, and siguro susunod kung nasa roadmap, we'll have Asterisk, Moonspeak, the Jarhead Syndrome. I think that's also Adze. Uh, we have a lot of local acts, and we can just get into it through these kinds of anime cosplay events. Ito yung mga hindi masyado napapansin. Of course, hindi rin natin napansin at that time yung uh, trend about local idols, there's Hydro Sozai and uh, the other cover groups, Dreamcatcher, Alice Project, Genki Stars, so on and so forth. And, and dami natin mga local acts. It's just a matter of perspective. And that's what we're going to leave to everyone in this podcast. And once again, JM, thank you very much. No worries, man. And just like to tell you also, thank you so much for giving out this avenue to people. Um, and also taking the time, kahit may sakit ka ngayon. Guys, may sakit sa Jing <laughs> um, uh, we, we really think na um, uh, even after a shoot, may oras pa siya dito. And uh, yeah, uh, just one more thing to send out there, people. There is no loss or at least um, lack of talent within the community. I I dare challenge anyone say na walang talento ang mga tao dito. It doesn't matter if it's an idol group. It doesn't matter if it's a musician or a single. Even an EDM group. Um, let's say, yung Kela Jazz. Remember oh, this? Yeah, Final Midnight Fantasy Channel. Three, three group of, yeah, Midnight Channel. Awesome, guys. And even to dance, um, yeah, They've been here for a long time. So, I'm not saying na, ano talaga, parang, ang pangit kasi parang gamit sa sabihin nila walang bantaan. No. There's no sort of shortage of talent for the the J-Rock community, or even the J-Community as well. Mm. Okay, so that's the Jarhead Syndrome, Asterisk Moonspeak, Midnight Channel, and then Project Materia. And yes, kaya nga meron tayo mga Battle of the Bands because there will still be <clears throat> a influx of talent. As long as organizers are holding these kinds of events, no problem. No problem at all. <clears throat> that's right. Keepsakes, the podcast. Again, thank you very much, JM from Project Materia, for sharing your time with me to talk about your story about your uh, project. And uh, looking forward, uh, yes, maybe we can have photographers in a roundtable discussion, maybe after a photo shoot, kung hindi pa sila pagod. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of our targets in this year. Uh, hopefully, hindi siya maging uh, todo lang. Okay, I have six minutes in this podcast before we close out. And I'd like to share you that there is this new program on Radio Cinco 
of which they talk about journalism in general. It's called Wagpo and they have veteran and trusted names in the industry. One of them is a veteran photographer for Time Magazine. One of them is our very own Lord De Vera. One of them is Ed Lingao of News 5 and Joey Francisco as well coming back from ANC. Going into News 5 again is perhaps his second time. And you see, uh, they don't just talk about the... Uh, politic, uh, politics of journalism or whatnot, no, or politics in general. They talk about being 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 titos. They talk about journalism. They would not stop talking about their experiences, because iba na panahon yun. It's 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 again. It's it's better time to reintroduce this kind of perspective. Whereas, uh, hindi mga mga tao ngayon, they do not appreciate. Uh, these uh, these industries or these works anymore and they will just call you ah dilawan ah Duterte ay my goodness so Wagpo is a too hard talk show it's too hard nightly late night talk show siguro and uh, aside from being heard on radio it's also heard on Radio Cinco's TV feed, which is 1PH on Signal Channel 6, if you have Channel 6, or, yeah, Signal Cable, Signal TV, Channel 6. And there, uh, 1PH is being brandished as the Tagalog, uh, the Filipino, rather, side of One News, because there's One News English, and there's Business World, and there's Philippine Star. Ito naman, 1PH, there's Radio Cinco in it. And there's Radio Cinco in it, and they they will probably have uh, their own um, their own uh, uh, set of programs, na solely for one page, such as One Balita with Cebuano. Uh, yes, it's it's in Bisaya too. So I have no problem about that. I am coming to Cebu with this kind of experience, and that helps me to at least feel na I'm 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 there kumbaga pa it's it's preparing me to be there so yeah uh every 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. and they started broadcasting on Monday which is the start of 1PH the official broadcast on Signal Channel 6 again Lord De Vera, Joey Francisco, Ed Lingao, uh Manny Mogato ay yon uh may mer- mer- pang ano eh, three uh uh major people on that ano eh, six six host panel she uh, and they talk about journalism in general so uh this these past episodes pretty interesting as I'm recording this episode they already have their first guest Celine Pialago Assistant Secretary, Spokesperson of the MMDA to talk about uh, the MMDA as a whole, life in the MMDA and of course uh, uh, it's already 11.33 which is meant to say na tapos na yung program but you can see it on Facebook Live the, uh, tomorrow so yeah it's a pretty good show that I recommend to every MassCom journalism uh, student out there who wants to get a grasp of the, the wisdom of the seniors that has gone to many borders, has crossed boundaries, and now they're relaxing titos, sharing their thoughts to a general public na mostly or some some of them will uh, I don't know if the serious or in jest na sasabihin dilawan ka but yeah uh, siguro at this time um, let me also share to you that uh, after siguro after meeting uh, parang lord somewhere uh, we are we had we had this cool conversation no? maybe we, we um, to share na rin, no? it's it's more about the uh, school of thoughts between the, the lumaki sa print and lumaki sa online. Ako yung lumaki sa online and they, they, they grew up on print, all of them. So, of course, in print, you have errata. 
and online you can easily uh, you can easily just alter or modify the story as appropriate and just mention uh, ed's note editor's note so on and so forth these are by far uh, the schools of thought that I've imagined having experienced the writing writing for an anime blog slash events blog slash otaku blog slash what, what will now be then called as a event review blog <laughs> or what not ano? uh, that that the hold me to a mindset that will eventually uh, build up what keep six is from scratch so uh, keep six is not just uh, a parang a newbie project that I did because I've been here as as you heard JM I've been here for quite a long time and I'll take pride on saying that thank you Lord na nagstay ako dito sa community so far I will be coming up uh, uh, I will be cooking a feature on my 10th year as a fan since my first visit to an anime convention which is Asia, uh, Anime Overload Festival and it was at the time SMX was built SMX was a youngster 2009 it's 2019 and it's, it's really a fantastic decade for me ito yung uh, amid all challenges amid all challenges that I've experienced nandito pa rin ako thank you lord uh, and yun nga, so balik tayo uh, first watch listen to wag po on 92.3 FM in Metro Manila or on channel 6 on Signal TV it's 1pH every 9 to 11pm on Mondays to Fridays and also, you can check out their Facebook feed. Facebook Live is on Radio Cinco. Uh, uh, Facebook page of Radio Cinco. Just, you can just easily find it. Radio Cinco 92.3 News FM. I'm, I'm really... Um, hindi, ako, hindi ako pinayaran to ano, this ano. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really advocating these kinds of conversations because casual conversations over, over these kinds. Ito yung, ito yung expertise ni paring Lord eh. And with that said, uh, yeah, go listen to Wagpo. Great conversations. Great conversations. And they'll be going better with it every single episode. So spare two hours of your time every night if you can. Just pop in your earphones on your radio, on Facebook, on TV, on cable TV rather. Yeah, Wagpo. That's the actual title of the show. That wraps up another episode of Keepsakes, the podcast. New episodes can be heard on anchor.fm slash keepsakes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You can follow me on Twitter at jagonoy. More updates will be posted on facebook.com slash keepsakes by J. Leave your voice messages using the Anchor app available on Google Play and the App Store. Shout out to Lee Rose Bear for the music. Thank you for listening to the podcast and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.